Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University, and today I've got an interview with a DAP developer. This is uh, Max. He has built a uh, game on the Ethereum blockchain called Chain Monsters. Uh, so Max, you want to say hey to everybody? Hello everybody. <laughs> uh, where are you, Max? I'm currently in uh, Germany. Awesome, so, awesome. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have you today, Max. Uh, so I've got a few, you know, questions uh, that I would love to ask you about your work with Chain Monsters. Um, but before, you know, I dive into anything specific, do you want to kind of just give your elevator pitch for Chain Monsters and, uh, you know, what it's about? Yeah. So basically, Chain Monsters is the very first uh, real game which uh, uses blockchain technology, specifically Ethereum blockchain, to um, to, to empower like uh, the game itself. So everything like ownership, like uh, game logic and mechanics is actually um, saved and uh, handled by the blockchain itself. So the actual game, which we're going to, to see some at some point later on, um, is actually just like um, a dumb little, little interface you can interact with and you can just play it like a usual game. But in, underneath, it actually uses like the whole uh, technology layer powered by, by Ethereum blockchain which makes like a lot of stuff really exciting and possible, which has never been done before. So yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, that's it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Well, I'm gonna pull up a. Uh, I'm gonna try to pull my screen up here, and hopefully we can. Uh, hopefully my recording will actually capture this. I'm gonna try to pull up the uh, Chain Monsters website here. I want to make sure that people can uh, know where to find your game. Um, so this is the URL, is it chainmonsters.io? Yeah, Okay. Exactly. So this is where you guys can check this out. So this is the landing page for Chain Monsters. Um, again, you'll need a, a, you know, a wallet with some Ether in to play. Um, you, know, you can use a wallet like MetaMask or uh, you know, Mist Browser or something like that to access the game. Um, you can see they've got a nice landing page here um, with some information about the game. And you just click on the game link. That's, that's the forward slash game in order to play. That's correct. And you should also check out our blog post because that's where like most of our uh, development progress is being posted. Awesome. Yeah, so that's at forward slash, uh, oh, is that Medium blog? Yeah, Medium, yeah. Okay. So yeah, check out the uh, Medium blog. This is Medium at, at Chain Monsters, is that correct? Yeah. Cool. All right, so let's, uh, let's jump into a few questions here. Um, so... Tell me, you know, sort of just about the, the premise of your game. You know, if, if I was a user and I was going to play, like, what are the rules? Like, what, what should I expect? So, basically, if you've ever played Pokemon or any Pokemon-style game when you were younger or even today, then the whole game mechanic, the whole premise is going to be something something similar. We're using um, the, the base mechanics of one of those um, older games, like Pokemon, for example, and putting a lot of new technologies and more mechanics on top of that. And it's actually something which has like never been done before because you have to think about like a global world, like everyone is connected through blockchain. There's like one only one server. Um, you can just play with your friends from Australia or whatever. Um, there's some going to be some centralized features implemented as well, like some real-time multiplayer where you can walk around, see each other, and do some adventures, basically. Um, but the, the, the whole base experience right now is just go out, um, uh, battle some monsters, uh, choose your starter, and just uh, have a good time on the blockchain, basically. And, uh, well, that's it, I guess. Nice. And so uh, are, you, are you turning these into collectibles? Well, yeah, we have, like, uh, 151 unique monsters uh, available in the game. We're currently very early in development since it's a full-scale game, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, we are about, I think we have currently 23 monsters right now. Um, and most of them are currently available on our marketplace. And when you register for the um, for a new account, which is completely free, um, then you just have to pay the transaction cost and they can choose your free starter and play around with it. And, um, well, right now you can just um, go ahead, choose your monster, battle some, some monsters, and, uh, well, see how, how, how the game works, basically. Um, which is currently limited through our uh, WebGL interface, but we have some plans for that as well. 
Cool, cool. So uh, these collectible monsters are these something that can be you know traded and sold like uh, with the as like a ERC seven twenty one uh, non fungible token. Yeah, so basically uh, our whole core is an, is based on the ERC721 uh, standard. And um, that means that you can trade and send or do whatever you want with your tokens. That they, they are owned by you. We don't have any uh, weird little mechanic on the core which makes it possible to, to pause it. So um, right, right. Uh, there are some other ERC721 tokens who have this kind of weird little functionality right. where, where it's like a little bit awkward for the um, people who just in, play the game, but well, we, we don't have that. We are just like giving all the power to the people with the exception of uh, your starter monster. Your starter monster is non-tradable, but in order to um, make um, the performance of your monsters and the game enjoyable, even at a later stage where Gen Zero monsters won't be available anymore, um, your starter monsters will always be uh, Gen Zero, so um, we can just do whatever you want. Yeah, very cool. So maybe uh, I've, I've talked about this a little bit on the channel. You know, the ER seven sorry, sorry ERC seven twenty one standard of a non fungible token. Uh, maybe, maybe just explain that a little more for for people, like how that's different from you know uh, ERC twenty token, like a cryptocurrency versus yep. you know an asset uh, that um, you know has uh, uh, an a, you know an, an irreplaceable value. Yeah. Well, so basically. If you have take like any cryptocurrency, like like Ethereum, for example, you can have like uh, one thousand or whatever uh, amount of Ethereum in your in your wallet, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, ERC seven twenty one takes it takes it a step further. Um, so each and every single of your tokens, because if each chain wants as a token, um, has some unique abilities, some unique attributes, stats, and and whatever. Uh, which is not possible with the ERC20 token standard, um, and it, it allows it allows us to actually like um, create tokens that are completely unique. Uh, so one token, if you like, see in, in a different marketplace, like one chain monster, will will never be uh, similar to another chain monster. Right. They all have individual uh, value basically, and uh, especially some individual and unique use cases in our game itself. Um, I guess that's like the biggest difference for ESC20 and ESC721. Yeah, so essentially like, you know, one individual ether could never become rare, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. one individual ether could never be worth more than another one, right? But that could that could be the case for a desirable chain monster or something like that. Yeah. Very cool. Um okay. So tell me about, you know, your involvement with the project. Are you the sole developer on the project? Did you work with the team? Okay, so so basically, um I have a traditional game uh, development background. Mm -hmm. uh, before I got involved in the Ethereum uh, blockchain and the tokens and stuff, I was just working in uh, the traditional German gaming industry. Um, but in, uh, I think, November of last year, I just started to get involved with um, actually taking like a technical look and dive deep into uh, the blockchain itself. Because I was introduced to blockchain and the whole cryptocurrency uh, thing I think like one year ago by by a good friend, and but I've never been really like into it as a developer. But then I had like a little bit of spare time after my my last project, which took about three years. But uh, this is going to be a little bit faster. Um, the um, so so the thing is, I just thought, okay, well we have like this whole new economy and the whole new possibilities powered by blockchain, so. What if I just made like a game that recreated something similar or is based on something similar I played I, I used to play uh, when I was uh, younger basically, which was Pokemon obviously, mm -hmm. and um, I thought okay, uh, there are like other games like Crypto Kitties for example who were like the the very first to create like an interface a visual interface for for players and investors to 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 do something uh, more than just trading uh, with their, their, their kittens and their uh, tokens. And I thought, okay, maybe take it to the, take it a, a step further basically by using my, my and my team's knowledge from the last uh, few years to do something which has actually never been done before. And I, I think we are still like the very first and the uh, only one, uh, the only um, ESC 71 game who actually is like a real game which you can play. Um, 
And this uh, basically made me myself, right next to my usual, usual work, just do something like an, which is called a proof of um, concept or MVP, mm -hmm. um, which was um, released, uh, I think, at the beginning of January 2018. Um, and then after it got some, some buffs by some other developers I, I knew from blockchain, um, I gathered my, my, my team basically and created the, the monsters, the artwork and um, the website especially. So, yeah, nice. currently we have like, yeah, different, different people from all around the world uh, coming together, uh, developing this, this game with me together. Um, and we're currently actually switching our current legal entities to something bigger to um, to make room for some new improvements and partners, actually. Nice, nice. So that kind of uh, embraces the spirit of decentralization, you know, sort of collaboration across the globe, things like that. It seems to be a common theme with some of these projects. Yeah. That is true. Our um, last project uh, was actually a project made for charity. And we worked with like 25 people from around the globe together, which was like one of the bigger games we, we, we did so far. And um, even though we didn't like work with blockchain there yet, um, we actually had like this whole spirit as you just mentioned. So it was a really nice experience and now we're just going to embrace it with uh, blockchain. Nice, nice, very cool. So you have, do you have a, uh... So you got a dedicated uh, graphics guy for the project and, and all, all the artwork and stuff like that? So um, our core team consists of about four to five people. And then we have like additional... Say four to five, four or five? Yeah, the, the, the thing is uh, one of them is currently switching to be full working full-time on this project. Cool. So it's, it's, it's still four, but we're just going to hire him full-time as well. Um, and then we have like additional uh, freelancers who are responsible for the monster art and um, some additional um, sounds, for example. Uh, and our core team consists of, well, well, me, myself, who is currently taking care of the, the Unity version, since um, it's not only the web and the solidity and uh, the, the other things, it's just there's a whole game under, underneath, basically. Right, right. <laughs> um, and um, then we have like um, someone who's a good friend friend of mine who uh, who just joined recently. He's doing the uh, the backend stuff, and he's going to switch to more Solidity code as well. Since, as I said earlier, most of our game logic is actually going to be handled by the blockchain. So instead of having everything uh, calculated by the by the client, we have most of our, if not everything, uh, calculated by the blockchain, and then just sent to the client basically. Um, we got a lead artist who has been responsible for most of our um, initial monster art. He has done like a really great job in um, in um, give, getting like the, the new freelancers uh, to to be part of a project to just um, use his art style to create uh, some new work basically, which has worked out very well. Um, then we have like um, a sound guy who worked with me on my last project actually. Um, which is just going to do some really nice retro style music and sound effects, just like the uh, old Nintendo games used to be. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. It's really nice. We're currently looking for an interface designer as well, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Making. Yeah. So uh, maybe, um, so it sounds like you're, you know, kind of, uh, as you're developing this, you have, you know, a sort of core set of technologies where you are now, and there's sort of a, a set of technologies that you're trying to move toward. Um, yeah. so in your, um, you know, wh wherever you're trying to go to, can you maybe explain, you know, where does Ethereum fit into this equation? Where does, you know, the other parts of your, uh, uh, app fit into the equation? Like what, what technologies are you using for the client side or, or graphics engines or stuff like that? Yeah. So, okay. So currently the uh, whole project is based on unity 3d. Okay. which is like one of the well, most known uh, game engines on the market. Um, then our whole uh, front-end website uh, stuff is currently based on React and uh, some Express servers just for the uh, marketplace uh, stuff. Um, everything is mostly running on two um, Amazon AVS un instances, which is um, has been really efficient for us, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, well, 
they're like those are the three parts which we're currently using right now and well on top of the blockchain app obviously we have like uh, three contracts the core the marketplace well the monster creator interface and the uh, the four actually <laughs> the um the uh, championship mode which is currently uh, deactivated i think because we have to fix the bug there but um yeah those are like the core contracts and our our core itself is based and made in a way that you can easily extend it with like new contracts, new mechanics and new systems, especially when it comes to evolving to breeding or um, to, to do like any sort of more competitive modes, for example, because currently it, it um, basically holds the, the, the ownership data, the, uh, the monster stats and um, well, some other little unrelated data to the uh, trainer and account profiles. Um, so this is the state right now, and our next move um, is to use traditional centralized systems like just a usual backend server to add this very simple version of uh, of real time multiplayer where you just walk around, as I said earlier, just walk around, meet other people. But but the the the, the twist in that kind of story is that everything is connected to the blockchain. So even the real-time system, which we have to rely on right now before we are using Plasma in the near future, um, is currently just like using the, uh, the, the just responsible for the, the, the movement and stuff. Right. So not important, nothing important to the game logic, just uh, something to give the players more more freedom to explore together, for example. And our goal in the um, in the long term is basically to, to um, implement a Plasma version of the um, of the smart contracts, and see how, how well they perform for uh, real time battles, for example. Mm -hmm. Because right now we are just like um, having only client side side battles with like wild encounters. So if you walk around the grass, you will uh, see some more monsters mm -hmm. and battle against them. And this is currently handled by the um, the client itself. But we'll be switched to the uh, smart contract once we have like um, the new mechanics added there and the network. Um, has added some more um, more efficient uh, transaction uh, solutions like Plasma, for example. Nice. Um, yeah, so, well, and we have actually like a really extensive roadmap in, oh, sorry for the uh, noises. It's okay. We have like, we have like a really extensive uh, roadmap in our white paper, actually, where you can see like uh, that like uh, breeding for Gen Zero, and uh, the more championship modes and stuff are quite coming like in the second and third quarter of 2018. Um, and the and the release for the for the core game itself, so the game uh, with or without the blockchain, hopefully with with blockchain completely integrated as well, uh, is planned to be uh, I think early uh, early 2019 I think. Very cool. So this is all planned right now. Very cool. So yeah, that that's awesome, man. So you mentioned um, you kind of mentioned you getting into interested in you know blockchain and cryptocurrency last year, um, and then kind of getting in jumping into you know programming with the blockchain kind of in your spare time. So what um, what what caused you to make the jump and to invest in the technology and kind of like where, I guess where do you see it going? Well, so. So basically, um, as I mentioned earlier, I was like introduced by a good friend of mine to cryptocurrency in general, and um, he was always like, "Okay, uh, look at Ethereum, man, it's going to change the world." Mm -hmm. And back then, I wasn't really like, um, I thought it was like something interesting, but 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 the uh, only when I started to 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 uh, deep, deeply uh, deeply into this whole technology level from a developer's point of view, I was really um, getting more and more interested. I was just trying out different things. I wrote some 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 bots to just try out the solidity side of things to just uh, experiment like uh, with different uh, solutions and projects. And um, and then I, I only realized like how big of a change this whole blockchain thing actually is. Because in my opinion, you can just take take any existing product, um, extend it or put it on blockchain, and it will just completely benefit from it as, as soon as the whole uh, delays are getting uh, getting resolved. Actually, but um, 
it's just going to change every single industry and I wanted to be one of the first to actually um, get into it and do my own thing with it. And I'm glad that it um, worked out with uh, that project. So, yeah, that's something nice. Yeah, very cool. So what, uh, I guess, what industry are you most excited about it changing or, or you know, what are, are you mostly interested in how it's going to change the gaming industry as far as your involvement goes or... It's, um, in my opinion, it's actually going to change the gaming industry mostly. I mean, uh, apart from like some other industries as well, but um, especially if those uh, network slowdowns and the transaction costs have been uh, lowered or resolved in, in some way or another, um, then blockchain is like one of the most important, is going to be one of the most important use cases for, for, for games. You just have to, to, to think about in traditional game development. I'm not sure if you're involved in that kind of uh, thing, but um, especially with my background in traditional games industry, I was just like blown away by the possibilities. You just have like one server, as I, as I said earlier, one server, everyone is connected to the same, uh, same logic. Everyone has the same uh, consensus basically about the uh, state of the game. Um, and right now, and, and even even Chambers is currently uh, benefiting from it right now because um, we, we we don't have to pay for 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 a big server to handle like everything ourselves. We just can use blockchain to handle everything for us. The users are currently well, it's not a big and it's not the one. so good that the users have to to pay for the transactions right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, we might have solution there soon. Um, and like. It's like just like a magical experience. It, it really is. Right. Yeah, <laughs> just, for a game developer. <laughs> yeah, and it's like it's it's going to change the world one way or another. But uh, especially for 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 gaming, it's going to stay, in my in my honest opinion. And well, the, the sooner you as a game developer are going uh, getting involved, the better, basically. Right. Uh, because sooner or later, even real-time multiplayer data will be able uh, to be handled by blockchain, and then everything else is just just gone, basically. Yeah, the cards just fall from there, right? Yeah. Yeah, very basically. cool. And you mentioned uh, Plasma a minute ago as some, uh, sort of a resource for you to, to get to speed with that. You want to explain that a little more? Plasma is something which is currently quite quite um, an experimental state, mm -hmm. even though I think uh, Vitalik Buterin has just... <clears throat> it's just released um, a very um, an MVP version or proof of concept. I'm not sure anymore, but it just released a new update, like um, I think one month ago, which uh, is really exciting. And what what, what it uh, basically meant for us that, as as we, as we could have seen on his uh, GitHub profile, was that we can easily um, use the existing code written in Solidity for chain monsters and put it. Um, and put it into like um, a, a plasma uh, operated uh, Ethereum blockchain, which is currently on one of the test net networks, I think. And what it what it does, it just um, instead of sending like one single transaction every time, mm -hmm. it just sends like like multiple like, like thousands of transactions and right. in, 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 um, puts them into like one chunk, and then that sends uh, these out, and they're still completely. Um, Reliable, they're still under the consensus basically, mm -hmm. and just makes everything more cheap, more efficient, and just well, great. Right. So, and that sort of removes the bottleneck for your real time experience, basically, as well. Yeah, at least we hope so. Uh, we need, still need to do some more extensive text testing, and we, um, since our current resources are more on the uh, core logic and pushing out more features and more content uh, as soon as possible. Um, we are currently um, at least like one of the guys I, I just mentioned who is going to uh, join full time in like one or two weeks. He's going to be like a full time um, uh, Solidity or like Plasma guy. So he's going to add some more. Um, um, uh, he's going to just be more involved in that as well. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Um, how do you all? So how do you all uh, monetize your DAP? Well. Currently, um, we have something called a Gen Zero auction. So we have like 10,000 Gen Zero units we're going to, to sell. 
Um, these are just monsters who have, are kind of, of, of boosted. They have like a little bit more and higher stats than the uh, usual monsters. Uh, you won't be able to get like a new Gen Zero monsters um, anywhere else. They're just like um, used for some kind of, of crowdfunding, basically. Um, since we're completely uh, self-funded independent right now. Um, and you can just go ahead to the marketplace, uh, get the new monster, and then uh, try the game. Uh, it, it's really important right now because you're not able to, to catch any wild monsters right now. This is something we have um, pushed out to a later state. Um, because then we would have to do like more solidity code and, and stuff. It would be like more complex and it's not really, we have to use our resources quite efficiently right now. Um, and especially, um, yeah. But the, um, so the, yeah, it's like just like the Gen Zero auction is like the most important part right now. Um, and um, yeah, otherwise we just have like a usual uh, broker fee in our marketplace. So if you are going to sell your monster someday, uh, you can just have like a little fee uh, to pay. But th this is like important because that's, it's um, through the power of ERC721. You can just go to any other marketplace. You can do your own marketplace. You can just mm -hmm. send your monster to whoever you want uh, without having to pay any fee. So, right. and we're actually working with like third party exchanges like um, OpenSea or uh, Rabbits together to uh, even encourage players to to try out new 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 places, new websites, new new D apps, basically. And um, yeah, we're really glad about these partnerships and hope to continue this uh, kind of journey with them together. Right, right, and that's the whole thing behind you know ERC seven twenty one, right? It's a standard, right? So the other uh, exchanges and marketplaces know yep. the interface for the token that you're exchanging, so they know how to implement yep. that and know how to transfer that wallet to wallet. Um, very cool. So. You know, you mentioned your. Um, well, actually, before I before I hit that, um, is, do you have uh, contract addresses listed on your website that people can can go to visit on EtherScan and and see? Yeah, we we uh, do have like all of our contract addresses are at the very bottom of our page. Okay. There's like a little Ethereum icon, and when you click on it, you can just um, see like three of our four uh, contracts right now. Uh, the fourth is currently under development because of that bug, but yeah. Okay. I can just, yeah, and um, we are basically doing the um, kind of open source way. We're just like pushing everything to 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 GitHub, basically, just to encourage people to 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 take a look at it, to to see how it works, and even to uh, maybe replicate it uh, someday. Who knows? Okay. Um, and that's like something which is really cool, which I haven't yeah. mentioned yet. If you if you wanted to, to, to mod the game, for example, you wanted to swap out the graphics, if you wanted to make like a 3D version of it, everything is on blockchain. So you could just put on like a 3D version of the game or do something completely different with the contracts and it would ju just work. And this is something okay. that's really exciting as well. Yeah, very collaborative. So the, the entire project is open source on GitHub? Uh, the, um, the Unity client is currently not. We're currently discussing this. Okay. Um, but well, we have to see, but sure, just like, sure. yeah, back and stuff is going to be sure. open. Sure. Very cool. Um, okay. So you, you know, you mentioned, uh, your medium blog, so everybody can see, uh, all your, all your updates about development. People can go to GitHub to see, uh, you know, for, for now, at least all the back end code and the progress that's going on there. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the website, chainmonsters.io, or you can hit the landing page and go to forward slash game to play. Um, is yeah. there is there anything else that you all would like to, for people to see, like any other social handles or anything like that where people can find you? Yeah, we have our Twitter handles, uh, but I think that they're also uh, linked in on the website and on the uh, Medium posts. Okay. Um, and, of course, our Discord, because there we're posting like patch notes, uh, daily news and uh, stuff in development, actually, like new uh, animated GIFs, which usually we don't post on social media uh, that often, but yeah, I guess cool. these are the most important. Cool. Well, is there uh, anything else that you'd like for the people watching to know about Chain Monsters? Um, I think 
there's like a little 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 um, display issue. If you start the game, then it takes a lot, little bit longer to load for the very first time because it just has to cache everything. Uh -huh. um, and there's no loading icon right now, even though we're trying to fix it right now. Um, you just have to, to wait there for like, depending on your uh, hardware, for like 10 seconds and then it will load. But there's like no loading indicator right now. But yeah, that's like cool, <laughs> the most cool. important thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah very cool. Well, Max, I really enjoyed our conversation today. Um, I'm excited to uh, see, you know, what the future holds for, for chain monsters and for, you know, just the Ethereum blockchain in general, um, you know, especially with the games that are coming out now. It seems like we're kind of in a little bit of an explosion. Uh, so it's excited to see, see what happens. Um, yeah, I would love to sit around and, and, and talk all day, but it sounds like you and I both have got uh, our work cut out for ourselves, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Well, Max, it's great having you. I uh, really enjoyed our chat. Um, everybody, be sure to check out chainmonsters.io. Go play the game. Um, keep track of all this progress of what's going on. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, – maybe we'll have you back on, you know, a little bit later as some, some things materialize and uh, we see what happens. Yeah, sure. I mean, we have, like, some big announcements coming soon, but I can't talk about that yet. Sure, sure. So, Yeah. Well, like That's I said, wait. yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll see those when they come out. Yeah. All okay. right, Max. Well, it's great talking. And uh, everybody, go check that out. Um, and, yeah, I hope everybody keep, uh, keep tabs on, on the channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to see more interviews like this, um, more folks like Max who are out there uh, in the trenches building, building dApps on the Ethereum blockchain. Thank you.